have you here in studio. That is an awesome thing. Hey, hey. Um, sounds crisp and clear. It's good. Uh, I would say something cheesy, like, how's your bracket? Uh, but I'm but I'm not going to do that. You didn't fill one out, Jeff. No, me neither. I'm liberated. I am bracket free as well. I had some good, some bad, what have you. All of that in between. I bet on every game of the tournament so far. Every single one. And when somebody got eliminated, I bet on like that the person that moved on, I did that too. Did you do okay? Because the public did very well this weekend. So I wondered how how you did. I did okay. Uh, okay. And let me tell you one of the reasons that I did okay uh, is that I kind of felt like this was a – so I was looking at this. Um, I think it's the fifth time I saw this since 1979. <laughs> there are so many amendments. <laughs> I nailed the fifth, too. That's One, two, risky three, with the four, pollen in the air. I, that could have yeah, yeah, yeah. flopped. Fifth time since 1979 that all eight number ones and twos are through to the Sweet 16. Screw your Cinderella. They don't exist. Not a single Cinderella remains. Unless you think the ACC's North Carolina State is a Cinderella. It's an improbable run, but they're in the ACC, and they won the conference tournament. I, I don't know that wow. you can say – I mean, that was surprising. That was nuts. But I don't think they qualify as a Cinderella. We beat the hell out of NC State yeah. less than a month ago. <laughs> and I, we're not they, good. They might qualify just a little bit. I, just a little bit. Hey, I like Kevin Keats. I like this whole ice cream thing. It makes me smile. You've seen this, right? When NC State wins, they eat ice cream. And that fat ass is the leader of the team. So you think about it, it's perfect. Of course that fatty eats ice cream. But I, I don't blame him. You don't have to be fat to love ice cream. Ice cream is delicious. If, if I had a weakness for sweets, and I don't, typically I don't really care about candy, for example, but I love me some ice cream. When I found out that Kevin Keats, the coach at NC State, rewards his players after each win by getting together and having an ice cream social, I thought, all right, I like you. That's pretty okay. That'd be cool. Anyhow, uh, but that's crazy, right? That NC State would be the only team left of a, of a Cinderella. Oakland had a chance, but they screwed it up at the end of regulation, and there you go. They're out. So there's no – did you stay up late watching the game last night? No. It was awesome. No. But I, I will say this was my theory about chalk coming back to the mm. college basketball, to, to sports in general in college, because COVID eligibility is waning. You're, you, you're not going to run into a ton of 23-, 24-year-olds. And that was something that was helping create chaos is this extra year where you've got grown men playing against lottery picks or, or one and done type players. Like, I think we're returning back to form here where the favorites are going to be the favorites moving forward in a lot of sports, not just March Madness. Um, I'll get back to some of the basketball in a second, but I want to return to the, the weekend that was uh, obviously went to practice on Saturday. Uh, first full padded practice. It was a big weekend for Florida State in general because you had the baseball team on the road to take on Clemson. More about that disaster in a second. You had a full padded practice for Florida State football, followed by a huge visitation weekend. I mean, best stars galore in town, including the top wide receiver, second number two recruit in the country, if you will, was in town. And uh, And so you could sense it when you were over there over the weekend. You could feel it. You could feel like it was heavy. Like the stuff was, we got blue chippers in the house here. Let's, let's do some things, right? And our Michael Langston did a good job of documenting all of that. And uh, you can go to warchant.com and, and read all of that. Uh, I'll comment on it here, here momentarily. But uh, yeah, I, I thought the practice was a little sloppy the first day of pads, frankly, a little sloppy. Um, but, you know, it was interesting. I thought they'd come out in shells. They're, they're full go, full go, ready to go. I really wish we could be out there for Thursdays hard-hitting affair that we will not get to see. We are not permitted to see this particular um, practice, this uh, full contact get-after-it scrimmage uh, that's going to take place Thursday. I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by several players. Some of them are newcomers, and some of them are guys that are taking the next step, and I wanted to see what that looked like in a scrimmage. So it sounded like, and you could tell me you saw it with your own eyes, that DJ threw the ball well. He did. Just Kids decided not to come down with the football. Some folks had some drop issues. Mm. Um, it happens. It's happening. You're going live for the first time, really. There was a lot of tussling. A lot but, of tussling, Tom. So through three practices, you've seen every rep. You're, you're pleased with what you've seen from DJ so far? Yeah, I'll tell you. 
it's cool to watch him throw the deep ball, man. Uh, he does so effortlessly. It, it, it is, you know, it's like those pitchers that have late life with the fastball and you kind of watch it come out of their hands and you're like, it does not look like it should be 98, but then you see it repeatedly register on the gun, 98, 99. It's just that easy power. He's got the easy deep ball. He's just such a big, strong guy. When he flicks it and you see it and you're watching, you're like, yeah, you don't think anything of it. And then you look, you're like, that's 65 yards in the air. Yeah, I saw a throw uh, over the weekend. He threw he threw a ball 60-plus yards in the air, and it was just – I mean, it wasn't a moonshot either. It was just a beautiful throw. Yeah, that's typical for him because he'll throw a 20-yarder from the far hash, and he'll throw it outside the numbers, which yeah. in and of itself is about a 60-yard throw. It doesn't feel like it because you're not pushing the ball vertically down the field as much, but those passing windows are open for him, and you see it consistently in games over and over with anticipation kids out of his break on the far side like if you've got anything less than a howitzer than you're an in 80 trouble. fastball in, yeah. the, in the parlance of mlb scouting it's a pick six you've got to have a cannon yeah he threw the ball well uh i i think that's we'll see how he runs an offense but he's throwing the ball well in those drills and every time we see him uh he makes good decisions you know what i, I will say this just can't get me in trouble this is an observation and i don't think it's like a strategic thing um he refuses. I love that he refuses to take the check down. Like th 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 this is like, you know how when you watch guys, when we get indoors and we get into those drills where it's, uh, you know, seven on seven or whatever, and, or, or even 11 on 11, they'll have, you know, these safety valve routes on every play. Mike has that in almost every play. And so a lot of times early for a guy when he's getting used to the offense, in this case, he's never run this offense. Uh, They'll take that, and you'll watch them take it over and over and over again. I get bored with that, and it's about me. But I get I get, I get bored with that. I'm like, great, there's another four-yard pass. But coaches want to see that you recognize where to go with the ball. And if the guy is open and everybody else is covered, you need to hit the check down. That's what you need to do, right? We used to beg Jameis for that, right? But but that that's kind of what you need to do. What I like about it is that he looks right at it. So he knows it's there, but he's like, I'm not doing that. I'm getting the ball down the damn field. And he will he will push it down the field. I mean, it's like, get your head around. It's coming. And uh, I love it. I, I think it's been fun to watch. Now, there will be teaching moments. That's what this is. It's spring. That's why I wish I could be out there on Thursday. Does he do that in a game? Does he do that in a game-like setting? Or does he take the check down because now we're playing for real and stuff's covered, you can't force everything. When you're just getting reps, I don't mind that pushing it down the field. I mean, I can hit a five-yard out. We know that. I don't need to do this. Let's go down here. And I like it. I think, well, he's veteran enough that if you want to work on some things, you work on some things. If you want to vet what you have, then go ahead. Take a look and see what Malik Benson's all about. See what Destin Hill is all about. And I know that Destin's consistently been Had a great camp so far. Good. I mean, three practices. He's been very, very good. But it could be an emphasis from the coaching staff, too. That's always something that, for me, when trying to assess what is happening in you a practice, know. you don't know. You don't know what they're told to do. That's that's why you can't say with great certainty, I know this kid screwed this play up. You don't yeah. know what he was told to do. You don't know what the order of operations is in some cases. Well, th this is Jordan two camps ago. Two springs ago, it was, quote, unquote, not a great camp from some. But look, man, we already know that he can run around. Yeah, and don't run around. I was saying that. I was so happy not to see him run. You've brought in a whole bunch of new receivers. Let's find out what they're about. You already know the pages of the playbook that you can operate. Let's discover what we can also operate mm -hmm. and expand the playbook. So I think that's sometimes where a camp for a specific player, quarterback's the easiest one to diagnose because they have the ball on every play. But even from a coverage standpoint, like maybe a safety is going to take a ridiculous angle because he wants to see, am I fast enough at this level to be able to pull that off? And he gets roasted on a play. Well, that's because he can. This is training, after all. That's what happens to pitchers in spring training, where they'll give up six home runs in an inning. And you're like, well, man, my guy is out here getting, you know, he's working on stuff. Yeah. He's like, trying to incorporate this slider. I can't seem to snap it off right now. No, they're all ending up in the parking lot. But yeah. it's hilarious. John Smoltz has yeah. a famous uh, start where he did not record an out, I right. think. Didn't record an out. And he didn't care. He was like, I'm going to work on this changeup. It's going to get done today. And he's just getting tattooed. And they walk, Bobby Cox walks out there to talk to him. He's like, go back. Go, I'm fine. This game doesn't matter. I'm trying to work on something. Get your fat ass back in the dugout. And he's throwing, and he's throwing just meatballs up there to get hit 450 feet. He's like, I'm working on it.
<laughs> okay, good. I just want to make sure you're okay. Like if you were trying and you were throwing 80, we have a problem. But uh, yeah, man, I it, yes, you can work on things. You're right. A couple of things stand out to me that I should observe here. Just we have to be careful what we say and how we talk about it. I don't want to give away. Obviously, I can't give away trade secrets here and stuff they're doing. But of the newcomers, I got to tell you, Tom, everybody's got a different answer for this. Because for some, it might be like, you know, you love, uh, you know, Lola Haya or something like that. For others, it might be, oh, it's DJ for me or it's Benson or it's whomever, right? Jalen Lucas is my guy, man. He's been he's been just a breath of fresh air to watch. He's It's just fun to watch him play football. He's tiny. Um, you know, he, he, they list him at five, nine. I'm not so sure. Uh, he's, I'm sure he's probably, you know, like five, nine, one seventy five. like he's stacked, but he's tiny, you know, you just, and they, they get, he gets lost. It's just hilarious to watch. I, I don't know how they plan to use him, but I think they're going to use him more than special teams. In my opinion, I, I, I would think it'd be foolish not to. Yeah, Norvell agrees with you. He was asked about that. I forget which press conference it was, but it was after practice. And then, you know, I think the question was, do you want to use him for more than just, and he starts laughing. He's like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh, I, yeah. You, you know, it's easy to see why I'm just going to tell you that now every year, somebody emerges in spring and you think maybe it's going to lead to something and it doesn't other guys have a bad spring and you think they're dead in the water and they end up having a great year. So I, I get that there's a lot of uh, practice still to come and a lot of strategy to implement and a lot of things to do. So we don't know. But based on this small sample size that I've seen, I've seen every practice. And so based on that, I'll tell you, he they got to find a way. He's just he's shot out of a cannon every time. He's fast as hell. I mean, like there's fast. Like you see fast guys, you're like, that guy's fast. And then you see that dude come whipping around the corner. Woo, hoo, 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 hoo. Look at this. And because he's so short, his feet are it's a thousand. I mean, it's unreal. He's like, you know, uh, muscle hamster was in Tampa. It's just, it's crazy. Uh, but it's fun to watch. He's, he's been a lot of fun to watch. A lot of guys have had these little moments. Um, I'll tell you what, I really can't wait to watch his career uh, but Jamari Howard uh, is somebody that I like an awful lot. And we don't hear people mention him too much, but he's 6'2", he's 190, and he's long, and he can flip his hips and, go and run. As they call him track. So. He can go. Yeah. Yeah, that's a different kind of speed. You see that. Uh, quietly, Vendravius Jacobs has had a good few days. Uh, um, quietly? That's good. Yeah, like just doing his job and going back to the huddle. Just there we go, Vendravius. Made a couple nice catches, a couple plays here and there. Showing the explosiveness out of his breaks. Yeah, it's always been there. Uh, there's all this other stuff that you got to wait and see uh, how that works out. But uh, I, this has been – it's been fun so far. I look forward to uh, going to practice again tomorrow and and, and just kind of seeing where they're at before this first scrimmage. But this is – it's been productive, and they've hit the ground running. Mike seems very pleased. He's been very, very uh, intense. Uh, Mike seems to have something to prove. He's in, he understands it's a new year. It's a different team and he's got to instill. And I mean, he, you got to do things right. I've noticed that each day in practice so far, he's gone black on black or the black shirt. You know, he usually uh, yeah. mixes it up. I wonder if he's wearing the black hat and this is some sort of psychology thing that uh, he's engaging in after the snub. I think the players would tell you that that's probably true. I mean, that's he's been hard on dudes. He's it's been brutal. Speaking of brutal, that's a tough way to lose a couple of games in this series. I'll live with that 15 to 5. Things happen. The other two, holy moly, that is gonna be tough to stomach if we don't find something out of the pen that is even remotely reliable, because if this weekend proved anything, it's that they don't have anybody. There's nobody coming out of that pen that you trust as far as you can throw them. It was something to behold. I texted a friend yesterday, diehard baseball guy, when we were up 11 to two. And I said to him in my text, feels like we need to score six or seven more to have a chance to win the game. And we were up 11 to two. I said, they have a chance to win the game. You just do. The second your starter comes out right now, Christmas tree. I mean, just lit up everybody. But it's it's made worse by the fact that they love to walk people. Look, man, 
Throw strikes. I'll deal with the aftermath. Somebody hits a 480 feet straight away center. All right, that's a solo home run. The biggest difference between the two teams this weekend obviously was bullpen, but it's that Clemson didn't just perpetually put people on base either by hitting them or walking them. So they gave up a gazillion home runs. Florida State hit a home run every other bat. I'm like, oh, there's somebody else is going yard. Somebody else is going yard. But their solo shots or a two-run shot, there were exceptions. Obviously, the first game, Ferrer hit a grand slam, but we got stopped in that game. There, there are moments, but they did not perpetuate the problem by giving up you know, a single followed by walk, 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 double, walk, walk, homer. Like, stop walking people. And, and I don't – that's got to be the toughest thing for Posey looking at his guys. It's like – it's one thing if your stuff is getting hit around the yard and you can adjust some things here. Maybe we want to live a little lower in the zone. Maybe we got to you – know, maybe we're going to pitch backwards. We're going to do some things a little bit differently with you. But if, if you can't throw strikes, I can't do anything with you because by, all they did was sit dead red after desperation. So what you would watch is walk – Walk, quite literally, walk, walk. Okay, well, now it's 2-0, and oh, and the bases are loaded, and there's nowhere to put them. What's coming? A get-me-over fastball that I'm going to hit 600 feet. And that's what they did. You just kept watching it, and they just sat belt high, pa-da, over and over and over again. And it's a series. I'm not panicking because I love this offense. That's the other thing we did learn. It gets – obviously buried by the fact that they lost all three games. It gets buried by the fact they couldn't get anybody out once they went to the pen and that they blew huge leads. But it has to mean something that you went on the road against a very good Clemson team and crushed their pitching. I mean, Florida State's offense is going to hit this year. You're going to have to win games as of now, 13 to 10, 12 to 8, or hope your starters go, you know, 8. When you play a lineup that's as good as that one, too. Sure. That's the other part of it. Yeah, it's a good lineup. Very good lineup. Uh, it's a lethal-ass lineup. Mm -hmm. and So are we. And so are we. Yeah. But we're not going to see very many one through nines, well, one through seven, like like Clemson. And I think that would be that the silver lining is perhaps you can gain some confidence against a team that's not in the top five, not going to be number two or number one in the country, at least at this point. Yeah, in the confidence calendar. is going to be necessary. I'll, I'll say that because those kids looked like they'd seen a ghost. It, it matters. I'm just saying, you know, there are some at bats, specifically in game one before it went haywire, where you see spoiling of oh, outstanding yeah. on the black pitches or, you know, lighter breaks off a slider that's perfect and foul ball, foul ball. And then eventually they wait. But that is the approach of an elite lineup that is the approach of an elite hitter there are going to be more in this conference don't get me wrong weekends yeah. are going to provide that that's a good team we played not excuses you you, you no. can record outs you could give up two runs an inning record outs and win two ball games Your they did open gave up 23 runs and eight and two thirds <laughs> 23 runs and eight and two thirds innings pitched over the weekend for your bullpen and what 18 would have done 19 i mean sweet Jesus. Could have won with, I think, 19. You would have won. It is a weird thing to watch a baseball game in which you lead 11-2 to two and you do not feel comfortable. As Whitaker's pitch count began to mount, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, how many can, I mean, Wink's not afraid to throw a guy 110 pitches. Can we, what can we do here? And then he gives up the singles and you're like, oh, he's done. He's shot. Okay. But it's 11 to two in the sixth inning and I'm not feeling good about it. My only thought was, well, we'll probably hit some more home runs because we do. Uh, and can we get to, you know, I honestly, I'll be really honest with you at 11 to two. I was hoping to get to 12 to two and run rule that ass because I didn't want to see our bullpen have to protect it. I right, didn't think we right. could. I didn't think we could. They got stuff though. That's the thing. That's the, the fun part of it. it. They, they can't do. control it, but they've got stuff. This isn't 86 and get me over Jamie Shoup days. No, you know? no, I agree. But it, ooh. And I don't. Bring Not excusing it. away anything. All, all I'm saying, they got something to work with here. And if you can refine a candidate or two, you're looking at 94 with a, with a plus breaking ball for college baseball. Like they all, most of them have it. Most of them have low 90s, mid 90s plus something really nice to offer as a slider change or curve. So there, there's stuff to work with. That's where I would not panic as much. 
But, you know, you, you don't have to blow leads like that <laughs> back-to-back games. <laughs> well, the, the, the first one was yeah. way worse than this one. The, the first one was, you're texting me on the plane. It's I, the ninth inning. You want to, I should read the text to the audience. Ooh, mm. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll edit. Th- th- this, guys, you're going to like this. Yeah, so my itinerary gets uh, backed up on Saturday. And on the flight from Atlanta to Tallahassee, Wi-Fi, no good. But I can message. I can text. <laughs> And so he lets me know that there's a problem. Well, yeah, I started out with just a problem. Let me, uh, I, I, because it's the three run bomb to right center before we take off. And I'm on the flight with a lot of Knowles. People are, you know, fist bump in like, all right, all right. Eight to one at that point, I think. Yeah, we're up eight to one. Um, and you have to leave. So you're thinking everything's going to be I'm fine. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Hunky dory. So then I said, uh, I said to you, this is funny. Sorry, guys. This is good radio. Here you go. I texted Tom. Now this is at seven twenty p.m. Yeah, I'm I'm about fifteen minutes from touching down. Well, no, twenty minutes from touching down in Tallahassee. Yeah. Well, this is the first time. This is the first one where I say, um, "We got some growing up to do." This ninth inning is starting to get ridiculous. Starting to get ridiculous. Tom's response: "Wait, what? Are we losing?" And then, which is a dumb question because it would be a walk off. But yeah, yeah, no, but that's okay. You're in the air. You're trying to get here. And then. I didn't answer right away, and you wrote you wrote back. All I have is text. <laughs> I wrote back. We're up eight to four. We've given up three so far. We've switched pitchers twice. Game time runs on deck. And then I wrote first and second, nobody out. And then you wrote back something I can't say. And then you wrote, "Well, who's pitching now?" <laughs> And then I said, we just brought in Dorsey. And you're like, okay, I like Dorsey. And then you asked me if Oxford Oxford had failed us. And I said, no, Abraham and Rowan has failed us. And then you wrote, what's the situation? I wrote, bases loaded, one out. And then you went, yeesh. And then the next text I wrote to you was, grand slam. Yeah, because I had just sent, I believe in Dorsey. Yeah, you wrote, I believe in Dorsey. And then I texted back Grand Slam, and you wrote, and then I wrote, we're going to lose. (laughs) Because we're tied, and I go, we're going to lose. At this point, I know. And then you go, you're kidding me. And I said, no, no, seven run ninth so far. Uh, And then you said something hilarious that I cannot say as a descriptor for said ninth. Well, I don't remember this. And then I said, um... Yeah, do you, do, I can't get into it. And at some point, there's just an all caps F word and some things. <laughs> it's Jeff Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Leak, a law firm dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Leak, a law firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Leak, a law firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLeakAlawFirm.com. Heisen Leak, a law firm, your advocate in times of need and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Oh my God, what happened to you? You're walking so cricket. Well, I was walking my alligator and I tripped on a cypress knee and I spilled my margarita. Oh my gosh, your margarita. Yeah, I blown my back completely out. I had to ride the alligator home. I don't know what to do. My back's killing me. You're such a poor man. You should know you should go to Finn Chiropractic. Really? You can go to their website and book an appointment and get you in as soon as possible. Go to FinnChiro.com. F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. You mean 24 hours a day I can make my appointment online and pay for it? Yep, right on their website. Wow, and it's discounted? Yeah. All right, that's what Florida man needs to do. No lines, no waiting. Visit FenCairo.com to book your next appointment with a discount. F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. That's F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. It's Fen Chiropractic, where the chiropractors love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hold my beer. I'm going to Fen Chiropractic. 
Have you been injured on Interstate 10? I'm Jimmy Fasig of Fasig Brooks Law Offices. We've partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic cameras along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Let us help you get the proof you need to stand up for yourself and get fair compensation for your injuries. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Basic Brooks, 850-777-7777, offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade-in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotSpring.com. That's TallahasseeHotSpring.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. go uh i see you guys in the chat i'll answer some of those questions in a moment should have mentioned that uh attention florida if you're a victim of an auto accident we introduce our live chat sponsor ice and legal law firm dedicated to representing injured clients statewide if you've been in an accident call ice and legal law firm 813-803-0733 for free consultation remember there's no cost to you unless they win your interests come first with Heisen Legal Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now, or you can visit HeisenLegalLawFirm.com. Heisen Legal Law Firm, your advocate in times of need, offices, Tampa. Uh, I did uh, really quickly note that the ACC has to be chest out four teams to the Sweet 16, despite being talked about as bums. Um, all year long, right? So SEC steady getting tagged when that tournament started. That was fun to note. Uh, they were. Good job, Florida. Good job, Bruce Pearl. Can't lose that game, Bruce. Jeez, that's a tough one. I see you, Bruce. That's a tough one. Jimbo. Yeah, that is. Woo. Come on, man. Uh, We'll see, by the way, regarding FSU. We had two players exhaust eligibility, Darren Green Jr., Josh Nickelberry. There have already been roster moves uh, for Florida State, so I'll touch on that briefly. Uh, I don't know. You know, I know where we're at with basketball right now. Frustrating, but, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was something, right? Good to see Florida lose in our breaking fashion, too. What a comeback. Kid was hitting threes from the parking lot left and right. Wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough. Tragic. 100 points. 40 minutes, they not won, good enough. They won as many tournament games this year as we did. It's toughy. Same for Florida Atlantic. Port of Gulf Coast, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So one of those. One of the one of those. Also Rands. Yeah. Uh I did I did uh, stay up late last night watching the basketball. It was great. It was fun. That AM game was a fun game to watch. And um it still captures me. It still grabs me. I still like it. 
I'm really pumped about this week, though. We got the return of baseball. Did you delve into the Shohei stuff? I did. I think I got a handle on it. Okay. Uh, and I jotted notes. I want to make sure I didn't get lost in all this because I ended up having kind of fun doing this, actually, to be on- honest with you. Um, it's a. It seems pretty clear what's happening. First, I want to take a moment to laugh at Reese Davis, who had to tweet out an apology and a retraction after he was doing a gambling segment with Aaron Dolan and said, after she was talking about, this is good. She's talking about, um, I mean, you have their gambling expert who works for a gambling organization, a gambling company. And he's talking to her and she gives him advice on a game. And he goes, quote, that seems like a risk-free investment, sir. (laughs) So he probably contacted, no doubt, by ESPN's attorneys. Yo, man, can't do that. Can't do that. So he tweeted out an apology later in the day. And um, it's pretty funny because within the apology, he's still doing what all ESPN hosts do, and that is promote their product. So he's saying he's sorry that any wager comes with risk and you should never overextend yourself and all the responsible things you tell people about gambling. Like if you admit gambling like I do, you tell people, look, bet within your means. Don't bet because I'm betting. Do whatever suits you, but understand there's a risk here. It's, It's not for the faint of heart. You can lose money when you gamble. So he basically says that, and in the midst of that, he says, though I'm not a gambler, I strongly encourage those who do. <laughs> it promotes the show. Like, like my man. That is a, that's an ingrained effort to, how many times has he been told, have all their hosts been told, you know? Reese, Reese, look, your apology tweet is going to get the second most hits this month. Next to your bracket tweet. So on your apology tweet, <laughs> make sure you point if you can <laughs> plug ESPN bet and our shows, it would do big numbers for us. Come on, Reese. Promo code Reese. So if you get into the details with the Muzahara Atani thing, I, I think they've got their out here. And I think it's a legitimate one. Now we'll get greater details as this goes on. Um, but it, it's fascinating here where you have the lawyer's statement initially pointing to quote massive theft. Right. And they were trying to, at that time, create um, the impression that that interpreter, Otani's interpreter was stealing money from Otani, implying that he's oblivious to all this in a weird way, but they knew that wasn't going to fly. They knew that wasn't going to work. And so they go from here, and then the, the lawyers come in, and they began to choose their words very, very carefully, as lawyers should. And this brought me back to us, buddy, the magic we've created over the years with the Jeff Cameron Show PR firm. Understanding that crisis is at hand here, and everything we say from this point forward is going to matter greatly as it pertains to what our client knew and did not know and is responsible for and not responsible for. But this is what we traffic in is the calm. It's very much like Leo DiCaprio and The Departed. My hand, steady. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we are in the PR firm. That's what the legal experts are in the situation, too. There's nothing we can't get out of with a little bit of calculated messaging. We need to be very good on every syllable, guys. Every syllable. This is smart what they did. What they did with their statement leaves things open where Otani could willingly make the wire transfers, okay? But that Muzahara misled him as to what they were for or who they were going to. So now you've got your cover for why Otani voluntarily gave out the money. By all accounts, the people who know Otani and his teammates at other stops say he's not a gambler. He doesn't care about, he doesn't watch other sports. He doesn't really care. He's a baseball guy through and through. And there's no evidence that baseball was bet on. Okay. So you have this plausible deniability. That's just seemingly who he is. And then you have this rather shaky fellow in Muzahara who now they've studied his resume. Turns out none of the things on his resume are true. 
He said he went to Cal. He didn't go to Cal. He said he went, you know, all these different things, right? So now we have a dishonest interpreter who's lied his way into Otani's life, who Otani trusts. I don't know why. But anyhow, then he goes to Otani and says, I'm in deep. I owe money. I need help. I need, I need your help. So he doesn't necessarily know what it's for. Uh, and then you go from here. This is, it's fascinating because the IRS is investigating Muzahara and Otani's attorneys have not said to whom they reported, quote, the massive thefts. You can go back and look in all this mumbo jumbo and get, you can get really deep in the weeds and it's kind of fun. Um, if Muzahara had stolen the money from Otani digitally, as is implied here, like he got in and got ac access to his accounts, right? And transferred, he'd be in jail. They, they would have already had him. He would have been cuffed by now. That, that's they, they can find those links. You're screwed. So this has to be a story, Tom, that voluntarily money was given to a dubious man for his problems mm. that have nothing to do with Otani. Right, and only his problems. His problems. Yes. Clearly his problems, Yes, Tom. nobody else's. Not it Otani. Is, it's a ton of problems for this very obviously dishonest man. God, no, not Otani. Never. So what you end up having is trying to prove whether or not Otani uh, was looking at this as a loan to a friend who was in deep trouble. Tom, that's, that's something he would do. Tom, it's, I submit to you as the Jeff Cameron Show PR firm creator that the more I look at this story, the more I realize that Otani is a great man, a really good and decent man who does not like to see friends in peril. His friend came to him in very much in peril. The man who, with whom he owed the bookie the money to, that guy is a shaky character. You can do backdrop on him too, by the way. And so while we need to sit and do business at the PR firm, I can tell you I believe we'll be able to needle thread our way home on this one. I think we have our out. The only thing larger than his talent in the game of baseball really is his heart. It's kindness. And, you know, no good deed. We've talked about this over the years. This is why lawyers exist. This is why people, you know, can be experts in their own field and operate in your interest. Because if you do good deeds on your own, oftentimes it, it goes not unpunished. You are punished for the good deed. And this is uh, another case of that, where a good man with a heart that exceeds his heart of gold, his talent level on the baseball field. If you could even imagine it. I just... I hate that the world has to be such a way that being cynical is probably the right approach. And I think Shohei's learned that lesson. Very valuable lesson to the tune of millions of dollars. Yeah. I would point out, by the way, the guy that uh, he transferred the money to, the wire transfer to, is Matthew Boyer. Do some research on Matthew Boyer. Uh, my man uh, has received payments from uh, a gambling operation which was linked to organized crime. He got in trouble and was involved in a Caribbean real estate scam. <laughs> of course he was. Yeah. Tell me this somehow gets back to Marvin Harrison. Uh, everything does. Everything does. But it is pretty funny. Um, that the, Boyer admits that he never met Otani. He's never done business with Otani. He, he loaned the money to Muzahara because he knew Muzahara was making 500 grand a year as an interpreter. For Otani. And so when he was asked, basically, like, why'd you keep extending this guy? Well, you can't say because I'm a criminal and I was trying to bury him for millions of dollars. <laughs> he has to say he had money. He had lots of money. I mean, he's making a ton of money. I knew that. So here's what's interesting is a context clue. Again, last week when this was all breaking, David Sampson was speaking on on that network, the Levitard network about uh, Ichiro mm -hmm. and how when you take on a player specifically from Japan. I don't know if this is the case for Central or South America or not. Um, you take on their interpreter as an employee of the team. That's just a condition of the agreement. Mm. Like, if you aren't going to do that, you don't get each road to you come to Miami. Yeah, yeah. And it is a must. It is not a negotiation. He is now your employee. If I'm going to sign this contract, you have a new employee. Yeah. And his name is my interpreter's name. Yeah. And he said it's the only employee in the history of his work with the Miami Marlins, Florida Marlins, that they did not run a background check on because 
it wasn't a normal hiring right, process. They had to hire me either the way. They had to take them. Right, right. Look, this is what this sounds like, too, by the way. And and it is interesting here. It All jokes aside, and it's easy to have fun with this, it does look to me like this guy got himself into a huge amount of gambling debt with the wrong people and got desperate and scared. There is no evidence, and there won't be, but there is no evidence whatsoever to support a claim that Otani was gambling which is the thing that Major League Baseball would be most concerned about. And they had to launch an investigation. Notice they made that announcement that the investigation was happening for baseball in Otani at 5.56 p.m. on a Friday. <laughs> That's when they announced that they were going to do the investigation, as one does on a Friday news dump at 5.56. That's exactly what they did. But that is fascinating. Like, my man, I think my man thought he was going to get killed. You know, $4.5 million, you, you might get killed. I think he thought he was going to die. Safest place in the world for him is the dugout. Good God. You got to know the people you hire. You got to have, I mean, that guy is there with you every day. What are we doing? This is crafted very well. Uh, their fall guy strategy is outstanding in the Otani camp. I got to give him credit here. I'm telling you, we've got, this is, we thought this was going to be a difficult case for the Jeff Cameron show PR firm. It is easy, 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 easy. We're playing baseball on opening day. Otani starting. We got no problems here. PR firm wins another one. Now, I don't know how much longer Mizahara will be alive. <laughs> but that this is not our concern, dude. Well, look, did the wire transfer get through or not? <laughs> I think he's fine. Yeah. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV. Your local news now. A Tallahassee woman has been charged in connection to the death of her three-year-old son. Cameron Evans, 35 years old, faces a charge of aggravated manslaughter in connection to his death. Her arrest stems from a death investigation of the child who was found unresponsive inside a Tallahassee apartment in January of last year. Evans is accused of leaving her son in the care of a man who she purchased drugs from. Her son was one year old at the time. An autopsy revealed Evans' son died in 2023 as a result of ingesting fentanyl and acetaminophen. The mother is facing a charge due to her being aware that the man both kept and sold narcotics from his apartment. Several unsecured medications were located around the man's bed in which the child had accessed and ingested. When EMS responded, he was taken to Tallahassee Memorial where he was pronounced deceased. Evans appeared in court Friday morning. She was denied bond. This is Rachel Anae with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update brought to you by Mecklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at mecklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 80. Winds out of the southeast 10 to 15 miles per hour. Mainly cloudy skies expected tonight. Lows dip down to about 64. Chance for storms tomorrow. 76. Cloudy skies expected. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, it's 74 degrees. What do you need tires on? Your car or truck? Tractor or heavy equipment? At Nice Tire and Auto Service, we have tires for all of these needs. And we service your vehicle from air conditioning and computerized alignment to oil changes and everything else under the hood. Call Nice Tire and Auto today at 574-4100. That's 574-4100 for your scheduled maintenance. National accounts welcome at Nice Tire and Auto Service, 4792 Blountstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpas, the food is always good. I mean, mm -hmm. everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the, whatever, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that the, what, what is the pork? The banco lechon, oh, Jeff. Okay, the banco chocolate. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that, uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3.
put out the pasture, if you will. Uh, and you've been putting off upgrading it because you don't know how to get rid of it. You don't know how to move it. You don't know what to do with it. Uh, our friends at Pitcher Penny will come pick it up, haul it away for you, and replace it with your new one. It's that simple. Remove, haul it away, get a brand new one, trade in value. You get credit towards your new hot tub. They make it easy. Check them out. An amazing hot tub is uh, a good thing to have, and you can get one now on the cheap, and they'll come get your old one. So pinch penny Greer Street. Go check it out. Huge, huge inventory. Like a pool, one of them is so big. It's a nice little spot, too, because if you want to go over to that area, go take a look, see what the new hot tub in your life is going to look like, and it gets better and better. The options increase as time goes on. You could complete that transaction. They don't advertise with us, but go get, uh, go get fitted for some clubs. I, I knew you were going to say that. It's right there. It's, it's right there. It's right there. It's a good thing. Hey, I have a, uh, I, I kind of, this is not a reveal because everybody already knows it. Um, but, you know, I was so excited when we got Cam Davis. And it's, it's been my great treat, treat to watch this guy run the football uh, so far in camp. He's a hoss, man. I, I really wish we could watch the scrimmage. I keep lamenting this. That's a big dude. We've got dudes. What is the speed like? What What is, is He flows. He really flows. He's not the fastest at the back, so certainly not. But he's fast enough. Good acceleration. Yes, yeah, great acceleration, but he just glides, Tom. He just glides for a guy that size. It doesn't make any sense. Judging by his high school film, what, what really high school highlights. I hate the term film with high school. It's your highlights. Yeah. It's your huddle. Mm-hmm. He's a quarterback in that situation, so the angles are different, the timing's different, the style is different, but he just seems to be able to change direction so suddenly at that size. That's the thing to me. Yes, he's going to have the toughness. You mean the body profile yeah. demands that he must. Yeah. But he just seems to be able to change directions so suddenly, which is important. It's how you get small and get an extra yard and a half. When uh, contact he's is he's fluid, man. He's very fluid, low center of gravity gigantic thighs people bounce off of him he's it's gonna i love what they have in the backfield man i, I just they've got a lot of options different singleton had a good day the other day he looked great that i'm glad to hear that you brought his name up because that, that was a guy i was gonna look at tomorrow I, it's gonna be rapid fire i'm gonna take in as much information as i possibly can but that dude last year's on campus he's already larger than toa feely now i know toa feely isn't cam davis but if you're coming out of high school directly and mm-hmm. you've got a frame that's like that and he's got track speed himself. He does. Man, that also is going to work. They've got a ton of weapons at that position. The running back is set. I feel good about it. They've got a lot of different styles that they can throw at you. They've got a bruiser. They've got a scat back. they got a guy that's shifty. they got a blazer. They, you know, they got kind of all you need there. Um. I think the whole thing, we've heard Mike talk about it a lot. It seemed evident in the way that they approached the transfer portal that they knew they had to get faster. They knew they needed to get the ball down the field to, I think, alleviate so much congestion up front in the running game. You just had people creeping over and over and over, not having to play you honest because you lost your speed at wide receiver, partly due to injury. Probably didn't have enough guys uh, that could really, really run, that could really lift the lid. And some of the guys that you did have got banged up. So to me, the biggest change is that you see a lot of speed, and that's what stands out so far early in camp. More than anything else is the speed. This is a faster team. I think it will be a faster team than last year's squad. I don't think it'll be close. They'll be a lot faster. Now, they may do some things that aren't as good as last year's team as well. I'm not saying that it's just an all win, 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 but – there's no question that they are going to be able to get down the field and open it up. And I think they're going to challenge people repeatedly. I don't think it's a coincidence that they're throwing the ball down the field as often as they do in this camp so far. I mean, they got a big armed quarterback and you brought in speed. It just stands to reason you'd see what we could do with that. And that'll be to me what stands out now, long way to go. See what else happens. Um, again, I, I, I'm excited about what I see a uh, healthy Destin Hill is going to help in that category. Big time. We knew he was a blazer a year ago until he got hurt. He looks fast as he's ever looked. Jalen Brown came in from LSU. He's fast. They got a lot. They got a lot in the way of weapons down the field. Any first impressions on the trenches from day one? I know you're just getting up to speed in day one of pads. I'm just wondering if, if anything appeared. I'm going to continue to tell you the same thing I told you a year ago and that you told us and we all agreed just a knowing nod, you and I over and over and over again. 
I think Otto is going to be a really good player. All right. I'm glad to hear that. I think he's going to be a really good player. Um, I'm very excited about what he is, and he stood out to me so far um, quite a bit, by the way. he's He's been, yeah, he's been good. Not that other people haven't necessarily fit the bill, but he's been the one where I'm like, oh, he's taking a leap. I already liked him. We we see it. It's quick. quick. It's really quick for the size. Hour two forthcoming. Stay with us. This is Justin Colvin, founder of the Medicare Help Desk. I routinely speak to seniors who are overwhelmed by the multitude of coverage options available to them. That's why I created the Medicare Help Desk radio show. Tune in every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. where I provide clear answers to all your questions about Medicare. The weather is unpredictable and can cause issues around your home. Weston Trawick provides commercial, residential, and industrial electrical wiring services, yearly inspections on fire alarms, portable generator sales, and so much more. With 24-7 emergency service and repair, Weston Trawick will be your calm in the storm. Give them a call at 514-0003. Weston Trawick, professional electrical services day or night. Visit online at westontrawick.com. Choose Hearth and Patio for custom fireplaces, maintenance, outdoor grills, kitchens, fire pits, lighting, and so much more. Check out all of Hearth and Patio's options online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and Patio, they keep the home fires burning. Have you been injured on I-10? I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices. We've partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic camera footage along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Memories fade and witnesses disappear. Securing important video footage now can make sure your claim receives the full attention it deserves. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Facing Brooks, 850-777-7777. Offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzi. Rizzi Kism of Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzi is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzi. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, there's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. Ask your doctor today about Sky Rizzi, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis, and visit skyrizzi.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZI to learn more. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, Happy Hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall, featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Gretna, Tallahassee. This is Brett Musburger's Action Update. Get insights into the sports betting market with v betting splits. See where the money is and keep updated on how the market is reacting. Only at VSIN.com. Now, here are the latest lines from my guys in the desert. Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament is set. All four number ones and number twos are still alive, and all are favored to win the respective games. UConn will take on San Diego State as nine and a half point favorites. Purdue will face off against Gonzaga with a minus four and a half point spread. North Carolina is a four and a half point favorite over Alabama. And Houston will meet up with Duke, also as four and a half point favorites. As for the number twos, Marquette is taking on NC State as seven and a half point favorites. Arizona are six and a half point favorites to win against Clemson. And both Iowa State and Tennessee are two and a half point favorites in their games against Illinois and Creighton, respectively. With your VEASAN Action Update, I'm Ron Culver on Tallahassee's Real Talk Station. Real Talk 93.3. 
Experience Tallahassee's newest and most unique culinary delight at Chow One Korean Steakhouse. Now open on Appalachian Parkway, just east of the Capitol Building. This all-you-can-eat steakhouse allows you to indulge yourself with premium meats cooked to perfection on your own personal grill at your table, paired with fresh house-made sauces and sides. Chow One brings the backyard family barbecue into an upscale dining experience. Check out Chow One Korean Steakhouse today at 1107 Appalachian Parkway. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please hurry. Four hours? I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, honey, tell the kids to tread water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. <laughs> At m Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At m and Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name m and Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850-575-9393 or visit us online at m and Plumbing.com. m and Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. I'll never forget, never forget that moment as long as, I as live. long as I live. My first call up ever as a member of the National Guard. When we got to the armory, they briefed us on the wildfires. They were getting dangerously close to homes. Helicopters were going out to drop water on the fires. Guys in the unit were preparing for firefighting with local fire crews. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Florida National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. Real Talk Fact Number 44. Banging your head against the wall for one hour burns 150 calories. This is Real Talk 93.3. Tallahassee's Real Talk Station. This is Brian Kilmeade, and I'm excited to be on the air in the capital city. Be sure to tune into my show. I'll be giving you all the latest news, information, and the truth you demand. The Brian Kilmeade Show is live from 9 till noon, right here on Real Talk 93.3. live from Florida's capital city. This is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. quickly here uh tonight at seven o'clock normally you would get the monday smash and you you are it's just going to be a different uh, variety of, of this tonight kind of a town hall if you will um we'll have an opportunity to uh do a round table really acc lawsuit round table seven o'clock i will be hosting that my man russ Voorhees. i see you there buddy appreciate you um yeah, we'll be talking and uh, we'll be, Gene will be there. Michael will be there. We'll have a chance to kind of go through the news of the day uh, and uh, kind of get caught up, I guess. And also, folks can ask questions. 
So I assume, Tom, those questions have been asked or are being asked as we speak. Uh, those questions are going to be in the chat tonight. Just in so, the chat, okay. So if you're interested in getting a legal opinion, Mike Tomkowitz, uh, a.k.a. loyalty mm -hmm. himself, will be in the building from 7 to 8. And if you've got questions, happen by the smash tonight, 7 p.m. The back half of the show, we will have your questions answered. I think in the beginning, it's going to be setting the stage of where we are, discussing the impact uh, of the Clemson suit on the entirety of the issue with the ACC, and getting legal opinions on that particular development. It uh, should be interesting stuff. It can get as dense as you'd like if you if you follow these things. But I think the good news is for Florida State, the reasons in a court of law for them to make a compelling case seem to be stacking up as the months go on. Yeah, and I just I hate how slow these things, uh, you know, operate, how slow it, it takes a while. And it's it's tough. Um and it's it's one of those things where it's um you think you're going to get some sort of eureka out of these hearings and you realize it's going to take longer than that uh and and that there'll be more of these and there's not going to be a pinpoint moment where you go okay the court says this we're all set um you know this last one that they argued up in North Carolina um you know, that we, we talked a little bit about what came of that um, and that the judge was unimpressed with the ACC's effort to lecture everybody on integrity. <laughs> I mean, it's great stuff. I hope they continue to fumble the ball like that because all this is, it's almost like arbitration. Like, in, in my opinion, it's almost like arbitration where you're making a case. And yes, I understand it's about venue. That That's what the ACC is literally arguing. But as the, the particular hearing goes well or poorly, your number goes up and down in terms of the settlement. Your leverage, as you say, all right, let's keep it out of the courtroom. Let's sidebar here and let's discuss what the number is going to be. Every day that you go into that courtroom, you're changing the number and who has a little bit more leverage. The judge's ruling, of course, which is supposed to come down. He promised it before April 9th. April 9th, yeah, before April 9th. So he believes he'll have a ruling on that. That can really change the number, but that's all these things are doing. They're not going to go the distance. There's no way either side wants to go the distance. It's about getting to a place where somebody's forced to come to the negotiating table for the settlement figure. I think that's the way it's going, at least. Uh, I would think that that is exactly. We we kind of first guessed that, didn't we? Um, What's the number is the thing we said since Oklahoma, been, Texas. What's been, the number? Yeah, I've been yelling it for some time now. What is the number? Um, also, ever since comments that we saw uh, being made by um, UNC's board of trustees chair. Uh, when, when we read what he had to say, I kind of thought, well, this, this is being expedited. In fact, for those that don't know, uh, this was the quote. I think that what Clemson is doing is 100% proof positive that a significant portion of the membership of the conference is unhappy. I don't see how it is anyone's in, in anyone's interest for the ACC leadership to try and browbeat its member schools from gaining access to information and being transparent. That's kind of the case Clemson is making. I think this shows that what is supposed to be a member-based organization is not being led in a way that represents the best interests of all of the members, but instead really representing the bottom tier of the membership at the expense of the top tier which is why Clemson and Florida State are doing what they're doing. I think that is obvious, was the left was the rest of that quote. That is uh, pretty damn direct. Yeah, and he goes on to add about his own university and how, you know, perhaps an existence separate the Atlantic Coast Conference is something that might be in their best interest. I think we all recognize that a change is hard, but sometimes change is what is needed. <laughs> we all have to fight the comfort of complacency. I think that now is the time to be very open in pursuing all options, including those beyond the Atlantic Coast Conference. Now, okay, <laughs> there it is. And that had to have felt a bit like the death knell. That had to feel like et tu, Brute. I mean, North Carolina's chair is saying these things in the heart of ACC land. And, you know, in that moment, Jim Phillips, 
I mean, I, if, if there was any hope, any any like threat of hope, I mean, that, it was vanquished. There. Well, the problem is that they added three more votes. You know, they, we're, I think right now we're close to having the votes by the old number in terms of people yeah. just saying yeah, yeah, the yeah, hell yeah. with this thing. And I just hope this conference shuts down before Miami wins a football championship, and it likely will because even if Miami stayed in this conference and they were there another 10 years, they probably wouldn't win one anyway. But it'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool if this conference just becomes something else. They rename it. They do whatever. And that program never won a conference championship in football. No, never did. Only played for it once and yeah. got blown out. So, you know, <laughs> that is pretty funny to think about for a moment, though. I think I, uh, I don't think I alarmed her, but she kind of chuckled and just looked at me knowing she couldn't say anything. I was talking with Andrea Adelson from ESPN at one of the practices and uh, you know me. And I, I, and, I at, do. and at yeah. some point I said, boy, Miami picked a wrong time to, and I can't say in addition to what I said about them sucking generally, I, 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 I you did for, for 20 years, sir. Well, I said, it's, it, I just said offhand, boy, Miami picked a bad time to suck for 20 plus years. And she goes, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized I wasn't talking to you. Uh, like, I didn't <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> it was great. It was great. She laughed. It was funny. I mean, we're, I hope we're, so. we're, we know each other. Okay. We're, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But she agreed. She was like, yeah. She goes, no, they not, did. Not good. Mm. <laughs> it's, a it's a process that's still in motion. <laughs> I've had good players from time to time, but it just, it just, just, just <laughs> never seems to be enough. Never seems to be enough. No, no, not enough at all. Uh, it's, a, it's a toughie. Yes, last hour I brought up the bullpen, which was tragic. But what I did not bring up has been brought up in the chat at the start of this hour, and that is true. All other member institutions that play baseball in the ACC need to file suit against Clemson's baseball operations. That is criminal. Oh, the hill. That and the after every pitch. What are we doing other than being dumb and really, really, really annoying at Clemson? What? Stop it. Stop it. It's a fine baseball team, fine baseball program. Well, coach, well played. They're going to be a problem. After every pitch, I texted Lou in the middle of a broadcast. I said, turn your mic, turn your mic off, turn the crowd mic off. I can't do this. It is ruining the, the game. Every pitch. They do it after every pitch. Who in their right mind would sit and listen to that over and over again? How does nobody in that press box go, Steve, Jesus, what are we doing? Well, Steve calls in to find bomb. My God. Over and over and over. And it doesn't help that we keep walking people. So then they're like, oh, on blast. It is insane. And the count goes to one and oh. And that one's fouled back. One and one. It's unreal. There's no, how can they? If you're a fan a diehard fan of Clemson and you go to baseball games, you hate yourself. You have emotional stress and issues or no hearing. Whew. I'm never going to unhear that non stop. And why that song? Probably for this express reason right here. This one, people like me flipping out. It was I woke up on Sunday hearing it. Then Sunday happened. I heard more of it. And now I'm hearing it today. I heard it on the drive over in my head. I actually caught myself at a red light getting ready to get on I-10 to get here to the studio. I was doing it at the red light. Criminal. I could sing the uh, the Empire um, theme for you. 800 588 <laughs> Empire. Does that help? Get something else stuck in your head. Uh, no, they got to stop it. They got They just have to stop it. I also don't get, um, you know, I don't, I, maybe it's, uh, you know, when you lose three games, you want to be careful in regards to the barbs. I get it. Clemson deserves credit. Uh, but 
why are there the players do the same stupid stuff too? They've got like choreographed dances between pitches and between batters in their dugout, like they're children. That is happening across sports now. You see it especially with the TikTok generation, and this is it's our to own just, program it used too. Used to just be softball. No. Uh, well, I mean, during the games, sure. I'm just saying in general, the kids are down with the choreographed dancing these days. Like even football players, it's it's a different it's a different era. They do like a choreographed three-man dance. There, there's one that Duke football did recently. That, uh, what about- do you mean after a big play or something? No, I'm saying in their spare time. In their spare time. So oh, it's a part of it's a part yeah. of teenage and college culture now. Yeah, yeah I guess. Across um, all sports, doesn't no, matter. But they kept showing the Clemson dugout in between batters, and there'd be like three guys going like this, and then two would be behind him going like this, and then they're like looking back over to the stands, and then I'm like, Jesus, this is ridiculous. Is everybody there on crack? It was a rave. They've got to stop. They got to. St- it's. I'm. Thank God that series is over. <laughs> it's actually kind of. Yeah, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I think we need to grab that. It's awful. So if we beat them in the ACC tournament, let's say. Oh, feels we're gonna, like we're destined to. We're going to screen grab whatever the hell it is you just did in the last minute. And then we're going to put that on. So it's it's not. It, I'm with, telling you with a flashing thing. It says Knowles win. Knowles win. I ended up muting my television and I had to run errands at one point and I put on the broadcast. I was listening to Eric and. I, I, I had to turn it. I told him. I texted him. I'm like, I can't listen to you anymore, bro. You're turn the crowd mic off because of the constant. I said, you must be going insane watching our bullpen blow massive leads, and you have to try to be calm about it. And then in between, like we're visiting the mound every five seconds, we're changing pictures, we're walking people like it's our job, and over and over. And you're just like, and it looks like they're gonna make a change. Posey come to the mound. They'll go to Oxford here. We'll be back. Doug Kingsmore Stadium in a moment. It's now tied 8 8. You're like, you're listening to Florida State Baseball on Learfield Sports. He just kept the character. Meanwhile, all the absurdities were going on around him. I just, oh. But I, I kind of thought about it like, okay, well, I only have to hear this for three games while we blow these leads. Their fans go to the games. Like you're go. I, there's no way you could never convince me, Jeff. You want to go watch Clemson baseball? No way in hell what about, ever. What about an usher? The poor usher, just trying to make a living, man. They're brainwashing me. It's just gotta. It's it's the worst thing ever. Walking through the stands and it, like a bunch of a fat hillbillies sitting there having to hear that. Like, look, you could look, when they scan the stands. You're like, look at this guy in overalls. You think he's digging this? He had legitimate overalls on. <laughs> his belly hanging out, leaning back. I'm like, he must think I am in hell. What has happened? What has happened to baseball? <laughs> right. What has happened to baseball is right. Time was you come it, to a Clemson just, baseball game. I might hear a fiddle. I don't hear this stuff. You don't even have, like, where is it a commentary I on like I'm in society? the pinball room. Like, it is, you feel like you're in the pinball machine. That's right. About to die. Yes. You know, over and over, it, it's always the same song. They have no other song, just that one. It's been outside one and oh, worst thing that I've experienced in a broadcast in a long time. And then add to it our bullpen giving up 400 runs in eight innings. Late 90s techno wasn't your thing, <laughs> uh. uh. Even if it were, yeah, I felt like we needed strobes. At some point, it was going to be strobes. Leather pants. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah. Pacifiers, drugs everywhere. Let remember, the Clemson fans get after it. I remember my uh, my youngest sister went to USF in the late 90s, early 2000s, and yeah, that was it. The techno stuff, uh, Darude Sandstorm, the original, you know, one of the OGs, and uh, uh, leather pants, I don't, yeah, cosmic I don't, bowling. Nope, missed it. Cosmic bowling. Everybody's in leather pants. Interesting time. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank, no, thank you. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV.
I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Appleyard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. Have you been injured on I-10? I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices. We have partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic camera footage along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Memories fade and witnesses disappear. Securing important video footage now can make sure your claim receives the full attention it deserves. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Facing Brooks, 850-777-7777. Offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. You probably already know that Pinch a Penny Pools and Spas is your one-stop destination for all pool maintenance needs, offering everything you need from chemicals, cleaners, vacuums, nets, and more. But that's not all. Pinch a Penny also carries a huge selection of premium hot springs, hot tubs, paired with easy financing options, making these luxury hot tubs affordable for everyone. And if you have an older hot tub and you're worried about the hassle of removing it, worry no more. Pinch a Penny will not only remove and haul away your old hot tub, but also offer a trade in value for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch a Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotspring.com. That's TallahasseeHotspring.com. A cup of joe, java, brew, go-go beans, brainwater, liquid lightning, wakey-wakey juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out if it's not Grassroots Coffee. At GrassrootsCoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the roast master himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it gets. You can get Grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants in town. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for Grassroots Coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has options to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Get to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. Your body is a masterpiece designed to heal itself from within. Learn how to maximize your health by tuning in to Phenomenal Health with me, Dr. Ryan Finn. Saturdays at 2.30. Experience true health today and call Finn Chiropractic at 386-7700. Siri, tell me a joke. The past, present, and future walk into a bar. It was tense. All jokes aside, the trained professionals at Mac and More Systems are serious about Apple products. For all your Mac repairs, call Mac and More Systems at 894-3622. 894-3622. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Here's a deep thought. What if the hokey pokey really is what it's all about? Hmm. You're listening to Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. As the summer months and uh, these beautiful spring days are upon us, uh, they now have tread 50. So if you just want to go and run and get a good sweat, just treadmill 50 minutes. It's awesome. Just go in there and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. There's just tread 50. You don't have to go lift or anything else. You just run. And if you just want to lift and you don't feel like running, well, they got you covered there too. There's a strength 50. 
and they do lower and upper body. So they really have kind of diversified the different ways in which you can work out at Orange Theory. So I know a lot of people like a lot of different things about that. They want to mix it up during the week. So uh, they give you that opportunity now when you book classes. So Orange Theory Fitness, there's one in Midtown, there's one North Side. Uh, Deion Sanders says he may, uh, and Irish Fell going to join us in a second before he does, I want to point out that Deion says he's going to try to sway uh, his son's fate in the draft, kind of like Eli Manning's situation, right, where the Mannings didn't want him to go. So he's, he's saying that. Now, imagine this on the heels of Deion Sanders saying this after being criticized for having a horrible class ranking and recruiting and showing no signs of uh, doing any better when it comes to high school recruiting. Quote, I really, truly, and all my heart believe that parents don't want me at their house. They want to come see my house. They want to see how I live. They want to see how I get down. They want to see what I got going on and what God's done in my life. This isn't going to work out for him. Correct. That's why I was saying that uh, Colorado yeah, no. isn't going to do any TV distribution last week because Dion doesn't want to be in anybody else's home. You got to come see him in Boulder. I want them to see uh, how beautiful it is here uh, and how much I love this city. I want them to see that because that's where their kids going to school. Kids coming here, going there is just a showcase. You know, uh, I don't, I'm worried about blowing money, sir. You're worried about the university's money if you go on a visit to a kid. He goes, I can't do the other things that other coaches do. You want to know why I can't do those things? I'm Coach Prime. <laughs> yeah, man. Not going to work out. We first guessed it. You think we're going to get the uh, Caleb Cunningham, Cunningham kid? Can get him out of Mississippi? I think there's some heavy lifting to be done at the skill positions. Um, but I think they're doing it looks like they've got some options at linebacker, front six. That's the new term. I'm gonna call it the front six from now on. I think they they're doing okay there, and the O line looks like it's coming together. That seems to be what well, Michael was talking about last week. Yeah, I'm really big on the offensive line stuff. That always, you know, because that plays. And by the way, the big the stud linebacker who I saw on Saturday, um, Talked about uh, an official visit to Florida State. So there you go. Uh, that's a miracle. A, a stud linebacker is interested in coming here. How about that? It, it does seem like early on in this 2025 cycle, um, as there was a kid who flipped, I think, from Georgia to USC this weekend, mm -hmm. a defensive that is, tackle. That is correct. That's an all-everything defensive tackle. That infrastructure is going to be very important for a lot of reasons. USC is desperate for defensive help. So infrastructure is going to be important. Auburn is always going to be desperate. So infrastructure is very important. Alabama is now going to be desperate for the first time, I believe, on the market because there isn't a Saban discount. So infrastructure is going to be very important. We've got good infrastructure. That's a that's a necessary There's a component. commitment made, and infrastructure is going to have to be very important. I also will tell you that, and I, I do believe this. Now, we'll see moving forward what the role is in totality. but. Um, Look, man, I, Ernie Sims being a part of this program again in any capacity is a good thing. Uh, Ernie was the highest rated recruit Florida State ever got uh, in terms of overall rating and is extremely well thought of. And, you know, that might buoy their linebacker recruiting. I'm, I'm rooting uh, for that to be the case. Uh, had a chance to speak with Ernie a couple different times so far being out there, and he's obviously very excited to be back here. Uh, I'm very excited to learn, very excited to kind of do some things that, um, you know, he's always wanted to do for Florida State. So he's – and he'll be excited to see you tomorrow, buddy. That'll be great. I can't wait. I have not seen him since – he was actually a War Chan TV alum as well. Mm -hmm. We did some breakdowns. Yeah. And uh, one of my favorite things ever that we've done was his defensive breakdown talking about coverage rules and principles for linebackers. It was so fascinating to watch him work on the board because we had the, the touch screen at that time. Yeah. If the people never came and picked they up. They never picked it up. That's still the weirdest thing of all time. They left like a seven thousand dollar touch. They just screen. left it there. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you brought that up. I forgot all about that. Like, why did they leave this here? They were supposed to come pick it up. It was bizarre. But Ernie's got a smile, a perpetual smile on his face. He's always kind of been that way. He's always been uh, kind of an affable guy. But you could just see it. He's really pumped now uh, to to be here and to and to see him on a day to day basis. Is awfully nice. And maybe he'll help out quite a bit with linebackers. 
Irashfell, Warchant.com. My man joins us as he's wont to do on Mondays. What's happening, partner? I'm good, Jeff. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, brother. Uh, I gave some thoughts on on what I'd seen uh, out there these first few practices, and uh, I know everybody's kind of weighed in, but I want you to weigh in for our listeners here. Uh, what's what stood out to you of what you can talk about, and uh, uh, what are you still interested to see now that the pads are on? Uh, I mean, there's so much. Yeah, right? there I mean, is. Like, it's um you know it's kind of hard to figure out where to start but uh, you know i think overall uh the talent level you know we, i think what we expected coming into it is probably pretty much played out what we expected i mean there there is a ton of talent a lot of new faces that uh you know should be able to bring a lot of uh speed and and different capabilities to this team but you also are reminded i think every time we go out there that you know it is so many new pieces um and whether it's uh, the new transfers that came in, the 14 new transfers that came in, or the 10 or 12 high school players that are there as early enrollees. Um, and then even some of the, the backups in the past who are now kind of trying to step up into bigger roles. There's just so much to take in. Uh, I don't know if there's like one central theme, um, but I would say overall, like I'm not less optimistic about their chances, um, but I also – and, and not less concerned about the fact that you have so many new new faces to plug in. Do you get as giddy and childlike as I do uh, when you watch uh, Jalen Lucas play football? Because he's just fun. That guy is just flying around every time we go out there. It's a joy to watch him play. Yeah, he's man. He's super talented. And I'm glad that uh, Norvell is excited about him because you know he and he kind of when when I asked about asked Norvell about him last week, he said you know yeah he, you know he's a great kick returner and everybody knows that. And he made a comment about you kind of, he's a guy you kind of need to have a plan for. In other words, the way I took that is, um, you know, he's not a guy, he's not, you know, Trey Benson where you're no. all three or 25 times, but he has an immense potential and uh, breakaway speed. And he's, he runs, he, he's not a, just a fast guy. Sometimes with track kind of speed, you just, you don't know, do they have agility? Do they have the ability to change direction? Do they have vision? All those types of things. I think we, in small sample sizes, we've seen this kid has all that. He's a football player with really elite speed. So I'm excited that they're excited about him because um, I definitely think he can he can really help the offense. I think he can too. And uh, I, I've been pleasantly surprised uh, watching him and the kind of the zeal with which he plays the game and blinding speed. And I, I it is good that Mike addressed it because now we can talk about it, right? We're not giving away secrets. He's basically telling you and telling everybody else, yeah, we're impressed. We're impressed. We're going to figure out a way to use him, which I'm excited about. I read your piece uh, with Daryl Jackson. Uh, for those that haven't had a chance to go and read it, it feels great is the uh, headline FSU defensive lineman Daryl Jackson brings new look, new energy into 2024. I'm glad you wrote it because I thought it looking at him, watching him at practice. He looks like he's in the best shape of his life. He looks like he's got a great mindset. He looks like he's a guy who's focused on, well, frankly, getting paid. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of. I think if you're a, if you're a reader that if you're the kind of like hardcore FSU fan that reads every practice report, watches every Mike Norvell video, uh, listens to you know all the content you can get, then you might be thinking, well, we heard great things about him last year, and mm -hmm. that's true, and that's true um, because he is you know just a, an incredibly gifted human being. And for a guy who kind of got screwed by the process and, and not, not able to play last year, he did have a good attitude in terms of, you know, he wasn't moping around, he wasn't sulking. But I think what we're seeing now is there's a difference between not being a, a, a problem and versus actually being like, okay, this is a motivated, uh, really dedicated dude with incredible <laughs> potential. And uh, it's just you look at him and, and you see some of the things he did. And it's not just the, you know, what he looks coming off the bus. I mean, he's making plays. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you talked about it as well. I mean, he's, he is, dis is a disruptive force, and his body is just uh, – I mean, you and I were standing there looking at him one day just like, man, what planet is he from? Yeah, we, we were having the conversation. I was right. I, we just looked at each other. He doesn't make any sense. And I this is why we were pumped about him a year ago is that you saw he was freakishly uh, put together. I mean, look, there's no other way to say it. I mean, the guy's 6'5", 330 he's a monster of a human being and he can move. We saw last year where he'd have moments, pockets of time where he was really motivated and they couldn't block him. But then obviously it would, it would be hard to sustain that for anybody. Once you learn, you're not gonna be able to play. So even though, like you said, he practiced every day and he was there, but 
it's hard when you know you're not going to get in. You don't, you're not allowed to play. He looks now like a guy who understands he's going to play and he's going to be relied upon to be a dominant force. Exactly. Now you look at that defensive tackle group, and if you've got him and if you've got Josh Farmer, who you know I think we all think is an all-ACC caliber player, yes, uh, a future NFL player, then you, you know, you've got the Grady Kelly kid. You've got um, you know some other pieces there, defensive tackle that um, – you know, I think there's a you know Daniel Lyons. Lyons has played well so far. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm excited yeah. about him too. So, so that you know, again, it's they've lost a lot from that defensive tackle group, but they don't appear to be in in danger of being in, in a depth issue. The one thing I, I would say, I think it to me, and we'll see what happens. The uh, Tamiwa Durajaye, the West Virginia transfer, they've said he might play defensive end, might play defensive tackle, based on what I've seen out of Lolo Heya and Marvin Jones Jr. Mm-hmm. and and all those guys, man, I think Zurajaye might help this team more inside a defensive tackle. We'll see. I'm sure they'll give him a chance to do both. My guess is the young man might want to play defensive end, but I think on this team, I think he he would help out, really bolster that interior. Where I think you, I feel pretty good about those top end defensive ends. Yeah, he's a monster too. By the way, that he's you see the size there. He's like a guy that you think if he does play defensive end, he's just setting the edge. He's not getting after right. the passer. But yeah, I think they slide him inside some too. There's no doubt about that. Uh, what would you do? Okay, here he is. Uh, Coach Ira is is at the dais and he's and he's just been asked about the bullpen, and he's thinking how to answer this delicately. What in the world do you do coming off of that? No, I think it would be this would be an epic press conference. <laughs> I would, I'd be throwing my shoes at people, <laughs> tearing off my clothes. What do you want me to do? Yeah, uh, yeah. Woo! that is. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's kind of the worst dreams you know come true. I mean, I, you know, I don't think you know Link was not necessarily bashful about saying that. Um, you know, he was a little bit concerned about the arms out of pen, and I think he was pleasantly surprised during those first that first month or so. Um, you know, they did come through in some some important situations, but again, like that was the thing, and you know, and, and you know, just talking to some friends about it and some colleagues about it, you know, you really don't know until you play a series like that. And you know, it's one thing to do it at home against you know Western Carolina or whoever. It's one thing to do it on the, even in a neutral site, but man, you go in an environment like that in a situation like that you really find out what guys are made of. And, and so now we'll see how they bounce back from, I mean, you know, I think there's still talent there. I think they've got guys to grow and maybe they'll be better from having been in it. But I just think for a lot of those guys, it was the first time they had been in that situation and it just crumbled and uh, snowballed. So uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't think this team was going to win it all this year necessarily. Uh, I wouldn't predict it. And I don't think now after seeing that, oh, they're not going to be a tournament team or not not host in the tournament. Uh, I just think, you know, that's a great growing experience for some guys who probably have never experienced that before. Well, you know, for starters, the one thing that gets overshadowed in all of this is that they we do know now they have a top-tier offense. Uh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, up and down this lineup, they bash. I mean, this is going to be a fun team to watch play the game of baseball because they do pick it up and they run the base as well. And their uh, their at bats are fantastic. I mean, they do a very good job with that. So they're they're not the unwatchable bunch that was losing games a year ago. They got they've gotten immensely better from where they were, uh, and their starting pitching is decent to good. They just don't. I mean, obviously, right now the the concern is this bullpen. It'll be interesting to see if you're right. It seems like it's going to go one of two ways, right? They're either wrecked from that and devoid of confidence, or it can't get any worse, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we'll see. I, I, I think uh, the way they came back, um, you know, the second game Saturday, and this wasn't necessarily the pitching staff, but just the team after getting 10 run rule to come back and, and get a big lead the second game. And then to go through that disastrous day and still have a big lead the next day. Yeah. Get a huge day, a bigger lead the next day. To me, that means I, I feel good about the mentality of the team and the mentality of how Blake Jarrett, Mike Posey, that staff deal with the players. So I think they're going to bounce through it, and then we'll just see if they're good enough to, to get other teams out because they, they were not good enough on that weekend. All right, brother. Always a pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jeff Seaman. Yep, take care. That's uh, Ira Chaffel, warchant.com. Uh, he's he's good. On the spot right there, he's like, yeah, you know, throwing shoes. <laughs> Actually, you have no choice but to be calm. Yeah, you, you don't – it's not like you can – I got asked about it in the chat here a moment ago, the Heist and Lincoln Law Firm chat. What would I do? Listen, you have who you have. You know that that's that's kind of your problem here is that uh, you you 
you got to figure out how to make that work as best you can. They're not going to be elite out of the pin. Like, that's not going to be the strength of your team. Uh, but they're better than they showed this weekend because the stuff is is better there. Um, I would also say they do have a potential shot in the arm. And I thought about it all weekend when I was watching the pin just fall to pieces. Is I kept thinking, where the hell has Ben Barrett? And he got a little dinged, I guess, up in Greenville when they were there for that tournament that they played in with the schools from the Midwest. And I, I the way I understand it, he wasn't hitting the gun where he was supposed to be. So they knew something was wrong. Like there was a sore arm or something. You know, you, if you throw 90 and all of a sudden you're throwing 80 and you're throwing everything you got, they know we got to shut it down. Let's take a look at what's going on here. But he's begun throwing again yeah. is what I was told. So if he's back to throwing, he's got, you know, you got something you can do with him there to help you out in the bullpen. He'll come in and throw strikes. Well, there was a time or two where Link brought his name up without a question addressing where's Ben. And so you could see why the importance level in his own mind, you know, that, Ben's an important piece for us. Oh, he is indeed. The thing I'd come back to here is I think this is more about psychology than mechanics, uh, experience than anything else for these younger pitchers. I mean, you know, Charles is still very young in his career. We know Rowan is a true freshman. You've got got the outs in the eighth, and you're like, okay, there you go, Rowan. And then just Abraham also, you know, again, (sighs) these guys have stuff for days. And some of the older guys are good matchup pieces if they don't have stuff. But generally speaking, you've got out pitches in that bullpen. You do. They just got to be able to command them. Correct. It, it, there's a problem. I'm not saying there's not a problem. It's just that I will come back to what you are working with here. Yeah. If yeah. you can cultivate two options, three options, that's okay. Now you're in a place where you're going to get these outs. And if you get it by nine, you can expect rightfully that you're going to win the baseball game. The uh, bomb that Abraham gave up, the pitch that he gave uh, that bomb up, it's like it's one of those pitches in the moment where you first guess as soon as it comes out of his hand i went oh no like rapid fire in my head because you don't have much time he releases it and you could just see from the release point what he was trying to do he missed his spot it's dead it's dead center belt high against their best hitter (laughs) it's just hanging there and i went Well, this is this is a problem. So the first test, I mean, obviously you got a game in Jacksonville tomorrow night against a, a team that did some good things this weekend in yeah, Florida. Going on the road to beat LSU is a, a big deal. That, especially when you drop the first one, you fight back and and they do what they did. So there is a test tomorrow that we'll see what uh, what the arms look like. But then for Cam on Friday, I mean, that's another thing. You know, it gets lost in the shuffle because of the bullpen issues. He, he couldn't locate either, and he got frustrated, and he was mad about the strike zone, and it just it affected him. Correct. He got squeezed a little bit here or there, but still, yeah, my man. Yeah, like, let it go. He didn't. And at 97, it seemed like that's the last pitch he wanted to use. Well, he and, started dancing, and it drove me nuts. And I yeah. texted you that. I'm like, you throw 97. Right. Right. Get in the zone. Get in the zone. They're going to lace a couple, They're but going to. it's They're 97. Gonna, yeah. Odds are we'll be okay. Yeah, I, I think he'll he'll grow up from that. Yeah, I think so. Um, frustrating, very frustrating. But you know what's not frustrating? Zaxby's. Oh no, never frustrating. Never. No, instead, it's delightful, delicious. Mm, can't wait. Platters at the Cameron household tonight, buddy. Really? Yeah, before the big show at seven o'clock tonight. Well, I know you're you're driving somebody somewhere, so maybe we can stop on the way. If you'd like to get some. Delicious Zaxby's. We have 64 locations in Tallahassee. I've yet to stop at one. This is my fault. This is a me issue. Since you came back to town. Yeah. I mean, you've stopped at a Zaxby's. Oh, of course. Of times, yes. No, but I've been here 36 hours and I, I failed. So yeah. I need I need to remedy that. On our way home, I'll swing past one of the 64 Zaxby's. We will support Zaxby's just as Zaxby's supports us and Florida State Athletics for over 19 years now as a Golden Chief Booster. My goodness gracious. We appreciate you, Zaxby's. It's Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local Attention, news. Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Leak, a law firm dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Leak, a law firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen League, a law firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLeagueLawFirm.com. Heisen League, a law firm, your advocate in times of need. 
told them he walked from Tallahassee, and during the encounter, he assaulted a WCSO deputy. He was then arrested and taken to the Wakulla County Jail. This is an active and ongoing investigation. This is Rachel Anae with Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 80. Winds out of the southeast 10 to 15 miles per hour. Mainly cloudy skies expected tonight. Lows dip down to about 64. Chance for storms tomorrow. 76. Cloudy skies expected. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, it's 77 degrees. Did you know metal roofs' survivability far exceeds that of traditional shingle roofs? It's time to consider a metal roof from Metal Roofing Sales of Tallahassee. We provide the best quality, least expensive material and accessories in the area, as well as material pickup and delivery. Our painted panels qualify for the City of Tallahassee's Low Interest Energy Star Loan Program also. And don't forget about our veteran and law enforcement discount. Give Metal Roofing Sales a call today at 536-9123, 536-9123. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpas, the food is always good. I mean, mm -hmm. everything on the menu. Mm-hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the, whatever, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The Banco Lechung, Jeff. Is that a, what, what is the pork? The Banco Lechung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the Banco Lechung. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that, uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. like to do this is the uh, time of year where uh it's a lot of fun to do and so i would point you very quickly to my friends at social kitchen uh they do a great job you can check them out for yourselves social kitchen tlh.com uh i mentioned my experience in speaking to the chef and learning more about how to prepare food uh Right now, the way it works, they've got a diverse range of discounts. They got promotions for uh, customers to indulge in, and uh, they have the delectable prepared meals. They've got discounted wines, and every day it's a different deal, including on um, the best steaks you'll find in town. Monday today, five dollars off um, any steak, five dollars a pound. There you, there you go. Off any steak that you choose on a Monday. So that's that's really a good deal there. Uh, and then on Tuesday they do the tote Tuesdays. You bring in your bag, um, fifteen percent discount on all chef prepared food items. Uh, and then and that includes the banana pudding, which got me started on this whole thing. Delicious wine Wednesdays. Specials throughout the week. Never heard of that before. Yeah. A little wine Wednesdays action. They're on Cary Forest Parkway over there. If you know where the ology is, then you know where they are. Swing on in there and uh, you'll be glad you did. Our old switchboard operator did love him some wine Wednesdays and wine Mondays and wine Tuesdays as well. <laughs> Remember how many lines he would generate? Yeah, I was just 47 phone lines. <laughs> I forgot about how many times we would say that. Um, make sure, by the way, that uh, when you go out to practice this week, Ira and I were just talking about it. You you note Daryl Jackson's improved physique. Back to that for a second. 
uh, he's got a chance to to wreck some folks. He looks at peace. That's the other thing. Just watching the interview because I, I consume it like the fan does, um, except for tomorrow, thankfully. And in a couple of weeks, I'll catch another practice. But just watching him, I've seen several of his interviews. They're typically good. He's engaging, but there's just a, he seems at peace. And, and I think that's one thing that this program does consistently well is that it shows you that if you work your butt off, the feeling of preparation and capability that you'll have to get through a practice or to know where to be, like there's, there's peace that comes with discipline. You often talk about this with kids. Mm. They want to have a schedule. They want to know where they, they want need to be disciplined. To be. Yeah. I just, the, the, this program harps on that in everything they do from scheduling the day to day existence of the athlete with their classes and their tutoring and their sports psych and their training. Like it just, you can see it when somebody's here for their second year, it clicks. They're here for their third year. They're at peace like this. This thing works. This machine works. And I think that's why they're getting a ton of yeses out of both high school and the portal. There's no doubt that what they've used and utilized as their messaging about how they wanted to build the program and the consistency with which they work themselves, meaning the coaches and what they ask of players, has paid off because now it runs smoothly. That's there's it's interesting to watch the guys that come around, the guys that kind of figure it out. There haven't been too many moments. Coaches have to walk a very fine line. When you have an elite level player at a program that is not performing well and you need more of those kinds of players to come in, you run the risk of alienating that person if you are hard on them and they know they're the best player on the team. They know they're the most talented guy and they know that you really can't afford to lose them. If you acquiesce to that, then your demands of players is you know deemed disingenuous and people will not follow you. If you stick to it, you could run them off and benefit long term for sticking to your guns. But it's tough because you may not last long enough to benefit from your consistency. And I thought Mike was playing that game. Like we had to watch early on, would he stick by and stick to his guns? Would, would, would he continue to preach we're, we're, we're built different. We're doing things the right way. There's a, there's a method to how we do this. It's never going to change. No matter the results of the games, it's always going to be this way. In the face of a make-or-break season like he did the year that they ended up going 10-3, and three. he bet on himself, and it worked out. And the consistency now is paying off in the visits from five-star players and also players like Daryl Jackson and Josh Farmers and others – who you've had some tense moments with in the past and you worried about where their head was at, those players have turned the corner. Those players have seen the results of that consistency. Well, the other part of it too, you know, there's negative recruiting for a lot of reasons that you have to weather the storm. It's not just about going 0-4. It's about how do I get kids to say yes when they think I'm on a hot seat, I'm about to get fired. So you've got to be consistent to the kid that you may never see if you don't make it that far. And then the negative recruiting is, well, they don't have a lot of natural ties to high school in the state of Florida. The negative recruiting is, oh, they'll, they'll go to the portal, but they won't develop anybody right. out of high school. And as they're answering each one of these questions and they're putting checks in the boxes of things that guys can no longer say against them. Now, perhaps the ACC exit being the last one that you're in a power conference. I mean, what do you got for me, says Mike? And, and I appreciate that. He is steadfast in a lot of ways because you're talking about it from a macro perspective. But then in a micro perspective, think about the, the substitutions that they did in games. Mm -hmm. Mass substitutions on defense and key drives because he's playing the long game. He believes that it's going to pay off in game 12, game 13. And boy, was he right. The way that defensive line played against Florida and Louisville was not only because of the necessity of a backup quarterback. They were fresh because he knew about the rotation, but you're risking the now yeah. for the payoff later. Well, he also knew they were good enough to win games as their offense struggled through an injury-riddled season. He knew that, okay, some of the offenses we're facing are not elite. I've got a chance to kind of just hang in there with this defense, play some field position, be smart, don't turn the football over, and you know, win, a, win an ugly game. I'll take these ugly wins because I got some guys that are playing right now defensively who are banged up. But if they're right by the end of the year, we can dominate when we have to dominate. 
i.e. the ACC championship game against a very good offense. Louisville had a successful and consistently good offense this year. He knew, now he could not have predicted that they were going to really have to fall back on their defense because of the injuries to Jordan Travis and others, but he, he did know that, yeah, he was letting guys get right, and they did. They got right. No, obviously, there may not be a better example of that than Braden Fisk. But I love that because, you know, from the program building perspective and then the coaching in a season, two different things. One is micro to the other's macro. Yeah. He's willing to run the numbers, make a calculation, and then stick with the game plan. I mean, that's the thing. You're betting on yourself. That's a long process of betting on yourself. And you're saying, hey, these are the numbers. This is the plan. We're sticking to the plan. That's not easy to do. Well, and there, you can talk about micro and macro here again within a game. You know, within a game to have the patience to let it be zip zip. And like, okay, we're going to be a conservative as hell and punt. We're better conditioned. We'll win out. We'll win out. And I mean, you're running the risk of getting down or something like that. Hey, good work. Good to have you back in studio. I uh, appreciate you guys as always. We'll talk to you later. And don't forget tonight, 7 o'clock, WarChant TV. Be a part of that conversation with uh, Florida State's Town Hall. Mm-hmm.